weather-based campaign management. <laughs> Y'all, weather-based campaign management. This is unreal. This also gets really intrusive from a targeting perspective. I wonder if Google tries to guard against this or if they haven't thought about it yet. This means we will not support this forever, but they still work, still functions. Google's example here, by the way, I think is it's too linear. An amusement park company may want to increase their bids when the weather is nice. Sure, obviously. If you've got a significant ad spend, there's no reason not to think along lines like the super cool idea. Uh, here's how it works. Every time you think Google can't get any cooler, something like this happens. Uh, Weather-based campaign management. <laughs> Y'all, weather-based campaign management. This is unreal. So first of all, note the big red flag, Google Ads Scripts legacy. This means we will not support this forever, but they still work, still functions. Um, <laughs> very clear neglect here. This looks like everybody's blog. The last blog was August 6, 2020, and it says, sorry, we haven't blogged in so long. Um, so for whatever that's worth or whatever that means, I don't think it means anything. Uh, even so, I, this is just, this is just so cool. Uh, the script uses Google spreadsheets to store the list of campaigns and their associated locations. A call to the open weather map API is made for each location, at least location and weather conditions are calculated using some basic rules. Uh, if a rule evaluates to true, then a corresponding location bid multiplier is applied to location targeting for the campaign. So you can choose to set up a rules engine based off of the weather in a particular location. And it's it's so cool. If you think about the implications, Google's example here, by the way, I think is it's too linear. An amusement park company may want to increase their bids when the weather is nice. Sure, obviously. But, you know, I also feel like if you wanted to really dive deep into the psychology of people, um, I mean, you could, uh, you could uh, think about swapping out the campaigns that you're running based off of sunny and rainy weather and you know just just the language that you would use that would be different or the imagery or the the, the ads the offer even um and and maybe that's that's too far of a reach for small businesses for sure but y'all for i mean if you've got a significant ad spend there is no reason not to think along lines like these so again don't just go down the middle of the lane and i'm probably just a kid with a shiny new toy and I want to see where it is that I can deploy it. But regardless, super cool idea. Uh, here's how it works. So you've got a, a couple of variables here. Um, condition name. It looks like there's only two conditions. Uh, the sheet shown above defines two weather conditions, sunny and rainy. What other weather conditions exist though? Is that the open weather map API? Could I use any condition in the open web, open weather map API? Um, I guess you'd have to go figure that out. So, I don't know. If somebody knows the answer to this, please tell me. I don't know how this would work. I've never used the Open Weather Map API. So I guess that would be the first thing, is you have to go learn the API and see what's available and accessible inside of the API. Uh, that said, even if it's just sunny and rainy, I think that that's freaking awesome. But it sounds like there's quite a bit more. But even in addition to that, um, we have temperature which, gosh, I'm in Phoenix, and the, the temperature in Phoenix can get up to 125 degrees Fahrenheit. So, you know, if you're a car wash, for instance, it might be like, hey, once the temperature gets past X, just stop advertising, because I know people aren't going to come wash their car today. That type of thing would be really interesting. Uh, precipitation. Actually, kind of same story with the car wash, now that I'm thinking about it. But again, that's just so middle lane. I'd want to think beyond that. I want to think a little bit bigger. Um, this is not a glitch. I'm interrupting the video you're watching because I need to remind you that I'm always looking for people to join our team. So if you're passionate about Google Ads and you want to work with the best Google Ads agency on the planet, please go to solate.com forward slash apply. Speaking of working with the best Google Ads agency on the planet, if you're having trouble with Google Ads and you want professional help, that's what we do. You can go to solate.com, that's S-O-L-8.com, to apply for your free, no obligation action plan. And if I've given you any level of value at all, maybe think about giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. That's how we juice the YouTube algorithm so they actually know that I know what I'm talking about. If you have questions, comments, concerns, or confessions, hit me below in the comments. And now, back to your regularly scheduled program. The wind speed in miles per hour 
Y'all, this is so cool. So you can make adjustments based off of the current temperature, precipitation in millimeters, the rain in millimeters during the last three hours, and then the wind speed in miles per hour, and then, of course, general condition, sunny or rainy. When defining weather conditions, specify below. And then you would give them the location data, which makes sense. So you have the geo target code. Um, but then what's really cool is you get to offer proximity. And proximity radi radius. So you could even do a little bit in the way of campaign sculpting by weather. You could have your sunny campaign and your rainy campaign and adjust what people are seeing based off of the weather in their area. And this also gets really intrusive from a targeting perspective. I wonder if Google tries to guard against this or if they haven't thought about it yet. But imagine being able to modify your ad copy. Um, you know, if it's raining outside and you're actually able to say, like, doesn't it suck that you can't go outside right now? Um, I don't know. I just think that, that that that's the type of interrupter marketing, too, that really captures people's attention. You know, you're just like, oh, my goodness, how on earth did you know that that was happening and that was taking place? Uh, I bet you that level of personalization is probably something that Google would frown upon, but I can't see how they would stop that. Uh, as a matter of fact, that kind of feels like what this is for. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to include a, a link to the, the, this article in the description of this video. Um, another thing to note is just the, the, some of the stuff that's available inside of this Google Ad Scripts. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's worth just like poking around and clicking around because there's, you know, uh, scripts inside of Google is something that I haven't done nearly as much of a deep dive as I should have. But uh, there's just, there's a lot that you can do. And, you know, a lot of those SaaS products, like, you know, Fred Vallis' um, optimizer, dive deep, deep, deep into scripts and then sort of sell the more polished version to you in, in a SaaS, which, of course, you know, I'm not bashing at all. I think it's a great idea. It's exactly what they should be. Um, here's what the script looks like. This is just so intimidating. I remember trying to build software back in the day and just because my attention to detail is so <laughs> flawed it was just like calculus it was like oh I made a mistake on line 12 so line 467 is going to be ruined forever until I find the mistake on line 12 and I never did and so I got um, super cool really excited about that can't wait to see how people use it would love to know how you're going to use it uh, would also love to know how you're using scripts. If you have scripts that you've built yourself or that you've stolen from other people that you find super functional, let me know. I wouldn't mind building a library of assets that we can give to folks, and I'd be happy to feature it here on the channel and give it away to people, and I'd give you a shout-out. We could even have you on the channel, and you can tell people what it is and how you use it. Um, yeah, we've got kind of a solid little community that's happening here. I think I'm at 11,000 subscribers. Is that true? Yeah, 10,800 subscribers. That is absolutely insane absolutely insane so if you're one of the subscribers and you watch on a regular basis really appreciate you thank you so much for supporting the channel uh, it's been super awesome um anyway that's all i got appreciate you watching and i'll see you tomorrow words are so important um so important and and i'm not just talking about to google like google is semantically obsessed fine take that put it aside for a moment the words that you choose to use are they're going to dictate how well you connect with your audience